welcome to today's out play episode today we will be featuring weaver so we will do staff power weaver and we will also do sword condition weaver because that's the two weavers i play and i think that's quite a lot of variety first let's wait a few minutes for everyone to tune in and uh, i will also be checking a few things uh, as always you can ask any questions in the twitch and I'll answer them uh, when I can but I think we can already start loading into the training golem because that takes a while with my old PC I'm checking some sound issues. For the Staff Weaver, I will do a few different rotations. And um, I will show them, but first we will discuss the traits and the gear, like always. And let's get to that. Uh, you will see my outfit when we look into my armor So this is just power weaver. So we have pretty much the snow cross build. We use a full ascended berserker With scholar runes I'm still adjusting some sounds Okay, so full ascender with Berser Berserker with Scholar Runes and um, we will use Staff. I have two Staffs because I'm also using Impact Seal for KC, otherwise you will use Air Sigil. So also the hoodies thing, the outfit is uh, Glacial Eye, Sorcerer, Shoulders, that's the human uh, most expensive one. We have Phoenix Vest. We have weavers, gloves, and we have zodiac pants, and then we have phoenix shoes. And then the trinkets and rings, and yeah, all of that will be also Berserker full ascended. For the traits, uh, oh yeah, and we have a force rune in both styles. Then for the traits, we will go fire, arcane, and weaver. With fire, we will take burning precision because um, it gives us extra burns um, yeah extra burning duration and burns on crit so it's just more damage in general we also have uh, gain aura when you pick conjured weapons but we are not using that much conjures and I think this is just more flat damage burning is a very high base damage condi then we have this burning fire which is to clean some conditions but that's the healer job to do so we don't need it then we have fireman's training it's pretty straightforward we have 10 percent increased damage when we are in fire it's also why weaver has such a high damage because we have so many flat damage modifiers such as this uh, the other one just gives you might when you create fire shields or some other kind of auras but we don't really need that because druids will give us enough might then we have just condition damage based on power we are not condi then we will take persisting flames this makes our fire fields last longer and most of our damage is pretty much coming from lava font so we will take this the other one is gain might when you use any fire attacks we don't need that again we have enough might from druids or um, just blind people when you burn them I think it's some kind of PvP things it doesn't do anything good for us here for arcane there is multiple choices we can take with the stake with the first line 
You can take the arcane precision if your group has enough vigor, so you don't have to generate it yourself. The vigor is very nice to have because you will have this uh, other trait that gives you extra damage on bones. But if you have druids with sun spirit traded, it, that should give enough vigor so you don't, don't need to take this trait. But when we're doing testing here at Golem, we will take this because the DPS test will not use vigor, so we will take extra vigor with this trait. Then from the second line, oh yeah, yeah, if you have enough vigor, then just take this one because you get extra burning or bleeding or other kind of condis with your critical hits. It's just extra damage overall if you have permanent vigor, but if you don't, then take the renewing stamina. That one is just some kind of heal yourself when you swap attunements, you don't need that because the druid will heal you. In the second line we have gained boon when struck based on your current attunement. It is good again because we get um, uh, more damage when we have boons. And as you can see when we are struck in fire we get retaliation and retaliation is generally not that much uh, accessible. It's mainly accessible by dragon hunters and guardians in general and if your group doesn't have dragon hunter you will not have that much retaliation so it's a good idea to self-generate that boon we also have arcane resurrection which is just that you revive people faster you don't need that you're not the healer then we have a final shielding this could be okay in a case that you have enough retaliation and protection that you don't need to self-generate them and you need a bit of extra defenses but otherwise just go with the elemental conti contingency i don't know how to pronounce that but anyway go with this trait then for the last one it's a no-brainer which we will take bountiful power it, it is it just says deal increased damage for each boon on you damage increased two percent so if we have all the boons we get a lot of percentage damage boost with the general DPS test you will have 6 boons and also you will get vigor on your own you will get, well you won't get this retaliation but you will get vigor and you will also get protection when you change to earth because you have uh, this grant a boon to nearby allies when changing attunement so you will get protection when you go to earth so you will have about 7 boons which means you have about 14% extra damage from this bountiful power trait. The other one is this arcane skills can reduce the recharge. We don't use arcane skills. The other one is cast some attack when you dodge, but uh, it's not that great. It's uh, not that much damage. In the weaver, everyone always takes the same ones for DPS, so we will take superior elements, which is has 50% increased crit chance against weakened enemies which is just very nice because well i will show you how much crit we have after we take the user boons but you will have about 83 or so and when you add 15 percent to that then you will have about 98 percent so you almost have full crit chance with this trait then we have Gain swiftness when you use dual attacks. Deal extra damage to enemies while under the effects of swiftness or super speed. So we pretty much have 7% flat damage increase when we're using this trait because you will always get swiftness from your druid or well and you will generate swiftness on your own with your dual attacks. Then we will take elements of rage. It just gives us again just a flat damage boost 10% extra damage whenever you attune twice and we will be attuning twice to fire fire quite often so again we have a flat damage booster the other ones is just that gain swiftness when you have some conditions we don't need that someone else will just save us when we have conditions the other is gain vigor when you use dual attack we don't need that we will get bigger either from the trade or from the druid then we have reverse prowess can increase condition damage and duration while attuning to different elements we are not condi we have 
the bolstered elements, gain stability when activating a stance, we're only using one stance and the cooldown on this internal cooldown is 70 seconds so it's not that good for us. Then we have gain increased vitality while wielding a sword, we are not using a sword. And gain super speed when inflicting inhibiting conditions on enemies. We don't really need super speed and this one has internal cooldown of 10 seconds so it's not very useful. For some bosses, well pretty much for only KC, instead of arcane line we will take air line. With air we will take these and why we take it it's this one will give you ferocity based on your precision so pretty much extra damage when you're already critting always you will get 7% uh, you, will, you will get more ferocity which means your crits will attack more it will deal more damage there is gain super speed when attuning to air we don't need super speed when attuning to air many times get grant boons to allies you grant auras too we don't have much access to auras so no point in taking that we will take the Tempest Defense. This one is very very good on KC because it pretty much gives you 20% damage increase on the burn phase of KC. Because you get 20% damage boost whenever your enemy is disabled. And KC will be stunned during that phase. So during the burn phase in KC you will have 20% increased damage. Then we have gain precision while attuned to air, air weapon skills reduce to recharge, we are not in air, not very often, so that's pointless, gain boon when casting a glyph, we are only using two glyphs and all these boons that gives might, regen, sweetness, protection, we will get from our supporting classes, then we will take the bot to the heart, which is again damage, uh, flat damage booster of 20%, when enemies are below 50% health. It is just a uh, best out of these three. There is also fresh air which is recharges air attunement on critical hit but we don't go to air often. I personally don't go to air other than during the burst phase or burst rotation. Other than that it will be just fire and earth. And then we have call down a lightning lord when you disable foe so you just attack your enemies when you disable them but in rage you cannot disable things uh, that much so it's pointless and the other one again 20% damage booster is too good to pass we will now just take the arcane because the golem is not stunned and in most cases you will use arcane anyway Now let's get to the actual rotation, so let's get the default boons for this test or presentation. We will take Might 25, we will take Fury, we will take Alacrity, Quickness, Regen, Swiftness. Now we already have the 6. We won't take Vigor because Snowcross doesn't use Vigor in their test. We will get Vigor from our Druid in Real Raid and we will also get Protection from Druids in Real Raid which will kind of increase the potential damage in raids if it was like a golem but we will not use them here because no cross doesn't use it for self we will take uh, we, we will also take the profession buffs we will take the usual so from ranger we take spotter sun frost and from warrior we will take strength discipline and empower allies they use all six it's easy to remember that you have six boons and six buffs for the golem we can just put all conditions because weaver doesn't gain extra damage on any extra conditions on golem so we will not make our damage any higher by just having all the conditions but if you want to use specific conditions you will need 25 stacks of vulnerability you will need burning and you will also need weakness why do you need this is we have this somewhere here we have a trait that gives uh, extra damage to burning yeah here deal more damage to burning foes you have 10 percent flat increase against burning foes we will not take pinpoint because we are power class and pinpoint is only used for dps tests when you are condi class um then here 
we have that increased crit chance against weakness or weakened foes. Uh, vulnerability, everyone knows that you will deal 25% extra damage when enemy has 25 stacks of vulnerability. So we will put them all now. For the golem size, you can either do small golem or big golem test. We will use the big golem to reduce some random number generation because Weaver's most attacks are very large area. For example, Meteor Shower is very huge. And if the golem is around the middle, all the meteors that strike near the edges will not strike the golem and you will get lower damage. Unless you get super lucky and all the meteors just drop on the golem. So we will take huge 4 million health golem. There are multiple rotations to Weaver. Uh, I usually just like to split them in three. There is the proper rotation, there is the burst rotation, and I also have a simplified rotation for all those people who want to get into Weaver but cannot remember all those cooldowns too well yet. We should discuss our utilities first too. So for healing skill, we can either take Aquatic Stance, which heals us when we attack um, enemies, or we can take Cliff of Elemental Harmony, which is flat heals us with 20 second cooldown. For the other utilities, we will take Cliff of Storms. It has a very, very strong... It's just a strong attack when used in fire or air. It looks like this in fire. It's some kind of firestorm a firestorm then in air it will do a lightning storm this is a bit stronger than the firestorm but ever since they changed the cooldowns that the cooldown will be lower in fire than it will be in air or in earth or water well depends on your attunement the cooldown will be different so it might be a bit harder to keep track and also this allows us to use the fire one more effectively because it's less cooldown than the air one but the air one looks like this it also gives vulnerability which is very nice especially at the start of the fight so now as you can see the cooldown is 50 seconds or so but when i go to fire it's a lot less so the cooldown is about 25 seconds when you are in fire but when you are in air it's 60 seconds so the fire storm cooldown is a lot less than the lightning storm which is why it's okay to use the storm cliff in fire as well now for the second utility we will take primordial sense it's just some extra damage we mainly use it in fire fire or air fire because those uh, have most damage the fire fire gives burning on every tick and the air will give vulnerability it looks like this, it also has two charges. When we change our attunement, it will also change the pulses. So if I go to fire fire, or I will now start with fire fire, it will do two fire burns or fire pulses. But when I go to air, it does this air fire pulse. So you generally want to use it right before you go to fire fire or in fire fire, so you get most damage out of it. The earth one will just give bleeding and that's usually less than the burning damage. Then for the third one, we will take uh, one conjure weapon. We will take conjure lightning hammer or we will take conjure frostbow. They both have their advantages. The frostbow is a ranged weapon. It also has a ranged, well, its best attack is ranged. You can put it anywhere you want. It looks like this. And the rest of the attacks are also range, so you can use this at range. The lightning hammer on the other hand is melee, so you shouldn't use it in a fight where you can't stay close to the boss always. For example, the lightning storm here, you cannot target where it goes, it will just be always around you. And the auto chain is melee. For the last elite, we will... Well, for the lead, we will take Conjure Fire Greatsword because it has the most damage and it's a great filler when all of our nice attacks are on cooldown. 
but if you're not used to the fire great sword you can take glyph of elementals i will discuss the simplified rotation also with the elementals because the simplified rotation doesn't use fire sword and also instead of primordial stance if you have to stay ranged the whole fight this is melee as you can see it only attacks near me I cannot attack the golem with this from here, it's kind of wasted to have this in a fight where you have to be ranged. For example, mid strat, well, I don't know if it's mid strat or noob strat. The strategy where everyone stands in the middle except the tank and black glider for Deimos. For that kind of fight, this will be useless and you want to just take the signet of fire, for example, where you just have improved crit chance, especially if there isn't that much weakness on the boss, so you will have more crits. So, is there any rotation you guys would prefer me to start with? I can start with the simplified rotation or with the burst rotation, but I would like to do the actual proper rotation last because that's the most complex. If there is no forever range, well, if you don't prefer any, I think we should start with the burst rotation because both the simplified and the proper rotation will both begin with this, and this is the most important rotation you will have in your Weaver play because this is the one you use for KC and every other burst phase ever. For this, we will start with, well, I think I will do it first and then explain what happened. I think it makes more sense so I will first show you how it works and then we will discuss it I'm not using food currently so my damage will be a bit lower That's pretty much it. That was maybe one of my best since I got 58k with the first phase without food. <laughs> but now we can explain what the hell happened. It looks a bit long, but it makes sense. We will start with Earth Fire because we want to use this eruption. It's just some extra damage at the start. It's also a very good precast because it takes some time before it explodes. It looks like this and it's rumbling, it's rumbling and now it hits. So you have time to cast your fire fields before it erupts. Uh, in earth, fire, we will only use the eruption. So we use the eruption. Then we will go to the fire. Well, we will just get the fire main. In fire main we will use lava font and pyroclastic blast so we will use 2 and 3 into the eruption then usually at this point you would go to fire but since this is the burst we will go to air in air we want to instantly start casting our cliff of storm like yeah cliff of storm lightning storm you want to cast this while it's casting you already want to queue meteor shower and while Meteor Shower is in action, you want to use your Primordial Stance and Attune to Fire during the cast of Meteor Shower. When you're in Fire, you will use 2 and 3. So you use 2 and 3. And then you will use your Lightning Hammer. During the cast of Lightning Storm, you will use Primordial Stance and Attune to Fire. So like this. When you're in fire fire, you will do two auto chains. So you will do this. Then you will drop your hammer. Then you will use two and three again. After that, you will go to earth. In earth, you will use two and three again. 
So two and three. You have to be careful with this tree because it has quite cast time and you don't want to cancel it. During the cast of three, you want to already start casting your, well, you want to prepare for it. So you want to already position your uh, fire great sword somewhere. So a bit like this. And after it casts, you want to use your fire sword. After you have placed your fire sword, you will turn to fire. And in fire, you must use four first and then five, because five is very long after cast. Now, I will show you what it looks like if you use them the wrong way around. The correct way is four and then five, so it looks like this. Four and five, drop. But if you use them the other way around, we will have to wait a bit for the cooldown. But you will see it takes a lot longer if we use it the wrong way around. The wrong way around would be five and then four. It takes a lot longer because the five has a very long aftercast. So that's why it's very important to use four first and then five. After you have used them, you will use love font, a tune to fire and now you're done with your burst. Yes, there is a written rotation as well. I can link it in the Discord. It's exactly the same as Snow Crows. Just a sec, I'll find it on their site. Elementalist. And that's pretty much it. This is the link. You can just click there the Power Weaver stuff, go to rotation, and there will be written rotation and there will also be written rotation explanation. And that's kinda it. We can go through it again if someone thinks they missed something. <laughs> But in general, it is just um, start with earth, go to fire, go to air. During the cast of meteor shower, go to fire. And use two and three, cast lightning hammer. In the lightning hammer, go to fire. Drop your hammer, then go to earth. Use your things, cast your fire sword go to fire and then lastly go to fire again I will now do it a bit slow motion while I explain what's happening so we start again with the earth main fire secondary it's two go to fire wait for it use two and three go to air use your quick storms sarcastic meteor shower Use primordial stance and go to fire. Use three and two. Cast the hammer. Go to fire. Start casting four. During four, cast your primordial stance. Do two auto chains. Use lava font. Go to earth. Go use two and three. Cast the sword. Go to fire. Use four and five. Drop the sword. Use two and go to fire. Mo, go away. This is like private. <laughs> I will turn in that you cannot join. Uh, but it, it's quite complex and it's mostly better to just also look it on Snow Crows. Because that's pretty much what it is. I can give you a bit of an example how much damage you should expect to get with it. So you will know if your rotation went okay. I will use some food now. With the arc DPS, if you click your name, you can see a graph like this. And you can check your max in the middle. And if you get similar max as me, you're doing the rotation as well as I am doing it. Sometimes you might get bad random number generation and get a lower max. Sometimes you get a lot higher because of the random numbers. But I will give you a number so you can 
try to compare your rotation so we will now I will just do the whole rotation and then give you the number you can also look at the damage graph to see how it keeps rising and what is the peak of the burst I don't have my fire great sword ready but that will not be a problem because the burst is already going down now with this try we got about 77k so you kind of want to aim for the max number here to be about 74 to 80 at least I'll reset and make another one to give another example of what the max should be if you are trying to do this yourself Remember that you should switch your attunements as fast as you can unless you're in fire fire and doing the fire fire usuals And that's it, this time we got about 76, a bit worse, random number generation But that's the kind of numbers you should aim for when you're trying to practice your burst Uh, if you need to open your arc dps again you can press shift alt c that's how you can hide your area stats if you press shift alt t you can close and open the option menu i think that's about it about the burst rotation now we can move on to the simplified rotation this rotation is very good for weavers who are still not that used to beavers and still want to get to playing it without knowing all the cooldowns and everything by heart it's um i'd say it's about 2k less than the actual weaver rotation so you're not losing much by doing this rotation with this rotation i will do it without the opener but basically i will first show some of the rotation to you and then we will discuss how it works like always so here we go Now we don't go to, oh, we should have gone to fire, but we don't go to air, because this is not the burst. But basically with this, whenever you go to fire fire, you use either meteor shower, or if meteor shower is not up, you will use a conjure weapon. I will now do it without the other utilities. So now, as you can see, we do not have the meteor shower up, so we will use the hammer. Otherwise we just keep going from fire to earth and so on And using 2 and 3 of cooldown Now we are in fire again so we'll use meteor shower because it's of cooldown Use the other things Use these 2 and 3 always on cooldown Now it's on cooldown we take the hammer We use the hammer instead of the meteor shower The damage on the meter isn't too great because I'm not using my utilities But this is generally the simplified rotation It's not very complex as you can see And this is a good way for you to start weaver And if you forget your rotation in a raid or something You can still use this rotation Now again we don't have meteor shower so we will use the hammer In the hammer you always use 4 and 2 auto chains Then you drop it you can also predict if your fire fire phase will have meteor shower up For example now I know I have it But I know it won't be up for the next one So after casting lava font I can already grab my hammer And then go to fire fire during my hammer You cannot see your meteor shower if you do it that way But if you know it won't be up you can go ahead and do that It's a bit faster and increases your damage We did the actual 
opening we could get a lot higher damage as well but that's pretty much for the simplified rotation it's not very hard so i will now do it with slow motion and try to explain what we're doing so we start with the earth fire always start with earth fire we use two and three of cooldown well we will use three well, basically, the, the goal here is that you keep switching your attunements as fast as you can, unless you are waiting for Lava Font. So, we will only use two, because we can use the Pyroclastic Fast also after we use Fire Attuning. Because we will have Earth, Minor and Fire Major, so this will stay the same. So, we will use two, switch attunement, use two and three. Go to Fire, use three and then five let it cast use two go to earth use two auto attack a bit go to fire use two and three go to fire you can use that three cast your hammer do two auto chains drop the hammer use two and three go to earth use two and then go to fire use two and three go to fire Use 3, use 5 Wait for lava font, use lava font Then to earth To fire Use 2 and 3 Go to fire, use 3 Take the hammer Because your meteor shower is not up 2 auto chains Use lava font, use 3 Use 2 and 3 Go to fire Use 2 and use 3 and use Meteor Shower again Use 2 and go to Earth Use 2 and 3 And that's it, it's very simple We will now add the utilities So we will add the Glyph of Storms And we will also add the Primordial Stance to rotation But it doesn't get much more complex with the simplified version we will use the sandstorm, well not sandstorm, but the firestorm whenever we are in fire fire And we will use the primordial stance also when we are in fire fire If you have some trouble clicking that far or pressing that far It's good idea to use these while you're casting for example the meteor shower or you're casting your hammer or things like that So when we add this, it would look like this, so we also, again, start with Earth We use 2, go to Fire Use 2 and 3, go to Fire, use 3 Cast this, Primordial Stance, cast 2 Cast 2, go to Fire Cast 2 and 3 Cast your Storm Glyph in the Fire Fire And 2 and get the Hammer do two autos Use two and three Use two and three again And two Meteor shower Use primordial stance You can use the great storms And two, go to earth And primordial stance in fire fire We should take our hammer we don't have the meteor shower up Use 2 and 3 Use 2 and 3 Again use 2 You can cast this while you're doing something else Cast meteor shower And 2 and 3 and so on It goes on forever like that And instead of the fire sword You can take the elemental The golem or whatever it is so this thing you can take this because you're not using the fire red sword it's a slight dps increase you should cast this thing in fire because it has more damage in fire than it has in okay i'm in the combat than it has in other elements so here can i like destroy him i don't think so I can't change it. Well, anyway, it is stronger in fire, so you should cast it in fire. Mm, 
Yes, you can use the air only in opener because the changes to the cooldown made it viable in fire as well. And it will make your rotation a lot easier when you don't have to go to air. It's also hard to keep track of the cooldown of the Glyph of Storms for the air glyph without going to air ever. You would have to always keep in your mind how much alacrity you had and how much how long ago you used it. Because you cannot see the cooldown in any way. For example, now I, I can show you an example what I mean. So if we went to fight the golem and we we did our opening, the usual stuff, and then we would when we would go to air, use it there, then we would just do again some usual stuffs here. I'm not doing any proper rotation, this is an example. But now we, we, we see it's like 10. Now it's 20 because we went to Earth. Now it's a lot up in fire and we could be like, oh, we're in fire fire and this firestorm is up. We can go to air now. And we go to air and oh, it's still on cooldown. Well, I have nothing. And you're kind of just fucked if you do that mistake. So you would have to keep in mind how much cooldown the actual air storm has. Which is why it's a lot easier to do it in fire. But I think... I think we now know how the simplified rotation works unless someone has some questions about the simplified rotation if not we can move on to the actual proper viva rotation and that one will be a bit different in a real fight than on the golem because on the golem the golem dies pretty much before you run out of everything <laughs> I will first do the actual rotation and then we will discuss it a bit, probably in slow motion. I'm doing this by heart, so I don't have a guide, but if you want to look at the written rotation, it's on snow cross. So the proper rotation with the opener would look something like this. This is just the opener I showed you earlier, there's nothing different to it, but it's how we continue after what changes. Now we're just auto attacking, waiting for our lava pumps, use lava pump, go to earth. I fucked it up because I lost my sword with that slow brain derps. I will probably just do it without saying anything because it takes a lot of brain power to do it properly. I'm sorry for the fail and inconvenience, but at least you will see the opener now again. Oh, whoops, I fucked up again. <laughs> well, I have done too much of that simplified version, so it's just getting fucked up now all the time. I'm very sorry for this, but basically with the proper rotation, you're supposed to use your weapons when your meteor shower is not coming up. You are supposed to get your meteor shower when you're in Earth main. That way, most of the meteor shower meteors will fall when you're actually in fire fire you have to go through the earth to fire to fire quite fast and you will also have a lot of moments where you're just auto attacking and it feels like you want to take up your hammer 
but you shouldn't because the meteor shower will come off cooldown soon and you are just waiting for lava font you're also using a lot of animation cancels you're canceling the fire great sword animation for the five by dropping it right after it actually casts the storm you just cancel the aftercast and you are also canceling the aftercast of lava font with the fire fire three with the proper rotation hopefully now i will not fail it with my brain lag after doing that simplified rotation for such a long moment quite complex, which is why I understand that many people want this video. sword you should pick it up right there before it disappears but it's basically this you use your things of cooldown you use the three to cancel your aftercast of lava font you keep auto attacking in fire waiting for your lava font to come up cooldown and you use your meteor shower in uh, earth main and go through the elements real quick and here you can also use casting clip of the storms as a filler we will wait for the lava font before we go to earth and use meteor shower because lava font is your main damage source and that's quite much it so to explain it you basically use the conjure weapons as fillers and it's almost like the simplified version but instead of just always doing the same thing you have to wait for some cooldowns and it's more of a priority based rotation so yeah it, it's it's not really too hard but you will have to know a bit more about your cooldowns and you will also have to be aware of how you can cancel some animations just like i showed you earlier the fire sword animation that's a very important one if you use for the five before four you will lose damage same with the lava font it has an aftercast like that your hand goes like there and back that's the aftercast which takes a while so you cannot start auto attacking for a moment which will be a damage loss so you would always use this and this right after so you can cancel a bit of that aftercast of your character not doing anything by using that right after it you also want to delay using the flame burst so you only use it after right after lava font with the proper rotation you also use the firestorm not just in fire fire you use it right before you go to fire fire as a filler if you you have for example you have lava font and the earth fire 3 is on cooldown so you can use this as a filler because this still does more damage than auto attacking it's also very good idea that you always switch your attunements while you're casting something with Reaver because it doesn't cancel your casts so for example if i was casting the this cliff i could be casting it and go to fire meanwhile same with the meteor shower we can change our attunements while we're casting things which is why it's uh, very important to do those while you're casting something because then you're not wasting your fingers or your mouse or anything while you should be doing damage 
because you have to be waiting during those casts anyway. It's very important that you don't cancel any of these. For example, it's very easy to cancel the lightning storm. If you start it and move a bit, it does a lot less hits. There is also the meteor shower. If you start casting it and move, you lose a lot of the meteors. You have to let it cast all the way. Same with some other things, I think here, the firestorm, if you move it, no, with that one you can move, but with quite many things you cannot do anything while it's casting, so you might as well be using your primordial sense, so this, or using your attunements while you're casting, so you're not really being idle at any point. I can uh, try to do the rotation and I could try to do it in slow motion, but it would kill the purpose of it because the actual rotation, you're doing the things as they come of cooldown and if I do it in slow motion, the cooldowns will be fucked up and you will not really see what you're supposed to press. So I guess we will just do it in fast motion again. And if you're doing the Weaver for the first time, the numbers you should be aiming for, I would say you should at least get over 35k with full ascended and that would be already good weaver damage because weaver has a lot of random number generation it's not easy to play so i would recommend that you aim for 35 first then you try to get always 1k higher and higher and higher until you get over 40 and then you can say that you're already pretty good at it and you can go practice something else So here we go again. Oh, I'm screwed up again. I'm a bit nervous with the stream, so I'm fucking up all the time and I'm again sorry for that. But I hope you will bear with me. And I hope this will also show you that it's a hard thing for everyone. Don't feel bad if you cannot do your weaver properly yet. It also requires a lot of support from other classes to give you stability and heals and protection. You need weakness and alacrity, otherwise your cooldowns will be fucked up. Uh, go to Earth. Okay, I guess we fucked up again. I'm just so sorry about this. This time I will just shut up and do it. It helps when you pick up your weapons while you are changing your tournaments. And I should have picked that up, but I'm um, again a bit too late. But if you fail your rotation, just keep doing it, keep going through the elements, just don't stop. Because when you stop going through your elements, you will lose that 10% extra damage for double attunement. And even with this boost chart not proper rotation, you don't get much lower than the actual proper rotation. Ooh, 
Well, here we got about 55 or no, no, not 55 for fuck's sake, 35 or according to Golem, 36. But that's pretty much it, I guess. And I'm sorry that I'm failing today, but I'm a bit tired and that will be my excuse. Does someone still want to see something about the Power Weaver? Or should we move on to the Condition Sword Weaver? I guess there is nothing currently, but if you guys have any questions later, we can still go back to the Power Weaver. have quite long loading screens, I'm sorry for that as well. <laughs> the Condi Beaver is a bit harder but also a bit easier to play. The Condi Beaver will use a lot more different elements but it will not have any ground targeting and it will still be quite fast paced well it will be fast paced so it's about the same level the one problem with Condi Weaver sword is that it's only melee you cannot use any range attacks really you have only let's say four attacks with range and you're also quite reliant on your team so it's more of a fun to play thing than proper meta build now let's load into the special forces training area. If someone is wondering how much I can do with a proper rotation of failing, I can do 40.6k with my weaver. That is the best I can do so far. So when I'm not turfing, I can play it properly. For this we will again take the Yuzu 6, so we will take Might Fury and Electric Fitness, Regen Swiftness. I will explain you the traits after we take these boons, because we will have to take this anyway. Then we will take Engineer Pinpoint, because this is a Condi. We will take the Ranger stuff, so Spotter, Sun, Frost. And then we will take from Warrior Strength, Discipline, and Empower Allies. Um, for the traits, we will take Fire, Earth, and Weaver. It's almost the same as the Power Weaver, just few differences. With the Fire, we will take again Burning Precision, just like the Power. We will again take the Persisting Flames, just like the power, but instead of the Pyromancer's Restraining, we will take Power Overwhelming, which is just extra condition damage. In the Earth line, we will take Certed Stones. Bleeding you inflict has increased duration. Deal increased damage to Bleeding Foes, so our bleeds will be a lot stronger. We have quite a lot of bleeding from the Earth attacks. Then the other ones we have on this line E are um, Earth Embrace, so we just get this shield whenever we drop below 50. Again, we don't need that because we will get healed by our healers. And it has a 75 per, uh, second internal cooldown, which makes it happen very rarely. Then we have Aura's Grant Allies Protection. We are not granting Auras, and we are not Auromancer, no point in taking that. We will take Strength in Stone, again, get condition damage based on your toughness, so we get again extra condition damage, it's pretty much the same as the power overwhelming, but instead of power, it scales with toughness. Uh, the other ones here are Rock Solid, so uh, grant stability to nearby allies when attuning to Earth. 
kind of nice, but the other one is to split damage. Uh, we have Geomancer's training, so decrease the duration of movement impairing conditions. Apply to you. Earth weapon skills can reduce recharge. We don't really need that. We are going through all the elements, so we don't need reduced cooldown on Earth attacks. For the last one, we will take Written in Stone, so Signets can reduce the recharge and their passive bonus will still be given to us even when they're recharging. We are using two Signets, so we are using Signets of Fire and Signets of Restoration, it's very nice to have. The other ones here are Diamond Skin, so remove conditions when you're struck. Uh, while your health is below 75%, it has internal cooldown of 1 second. So it's pretty good, okay, gonna clean, but the other one is just more damage. And Stone Heart, you can be critically hit when attuned to Earth, but that's not our problem really. We shouldn't be hit at all, or if we are hit, then the druids or other healers will heal us. For the Weaver, we take pretty much the same. But instead of taking Swift Revenge, we take Weaver's Prowess because it will give us 10% condition damage and 20% condition duration whenever we go to a different element. The gear will be full Viper with Berserker runes. You should go for Renegade runes because they're stronger. I have Berserker runes because I haven't had time to change to the better version. So the Renegade runes, everything is full Viper. We will use Malice, the Sigil of Malice, and we will use the Sigil of Geomancy. Geomancy is especially nice with Beaver because whenever you change your attunement, you get the weapon swap effect. The weapons are Sword and Dagger, and the accessories will be full Viper as well. Uh, I have shown the equipment at the start, it's just full Berserker, completely full Berserker and I think that's pretty much the same as they have on Snowcrows and I just checked and that's it. You should go full Berserkers and you will get about 98% crit chance without any fusions because whenever the enemies have weakness you get extra 50% crit chance. Then can look into our utilities. I'll just spawn this golem already. Let's just take all conditions because we don't get extra damage for extra conditions like holo does, so it should be fine. No, I don't want large, I want average. Okay. For the utilities, we will go with the Signet of Restoration, so we heal ourselves every time we cast anything. But we can also use this as an active because we have that trait. We have the trait written in stone. So even if we use the Signet of Restoration, we will still get the passive effect here. We have the passive effect even though it's on cooldown. Same with the sig Signet of Fire. The active has a lot of burning. 22,000, well more like 23,000 burning on 12 second cooldown and it also gives us precision so increased crit chance it's just a very nice utility to have then we have cliff of elemental power inflict conditions on your next few strikes based on your attunement so whenever we are in fire we will burn our enemies and whenever we go to earth we will bleed our enemies so this should be used whenever we are in fire fire or earth earth but i recommend you use it in fire fire then we have primordial stance this is again familiar from the power weaver but for the lead we have the actually weave self this build that I'm using now doesn't have any conjures, so if you hate conjures we conjure weapons, this could be very nice for you. The weave self gives us boons based on where we are tuned to. So if we were in fire during the weave self, we get 20% condition damage. If we are in earth, we get toughness. If we are in air, we get movement speed. And in water, we get boon duration and outgoing healing effectiveness. But why do we want this if we just use pretty much 
if we never go to water or, or something like that well the deal with this is that if we go through all the elements we get a perfect weave so we get the extras they have for example the 20% condition damage we get it again I don't think they stack but you get even longer duration of that 20% condition damage increase it also has an active which is a uh, very strong CC but we usually don't use that we only use this for the extra 20% condition damage so how it actually works it is again that you just pretty much go through the elements and use your best attacks we use pretty much anything that has any burning or bleeding on it with this build I will first show you what we do and then we will again discuss how it works the food we will just use the usual condi food I'm using red lentils, abosas and tuning icicles for the power weaver you can use truffle steak and tin cake as a budget, budget option if you want to have more damage you can get the sweet and spicy butternut squash soup so how it works it's good idea to check all your attacks when you're getting into the sword weaver but now i will just show you how it works and everything i use has either burning or bleeding on it and that's why we're pretty much using it except that lightning attack but it's strong on its base so it's a good idea to use it anyway now we have the perfect weave you know you managed your perfect weave when this icon changes its look when it looks different it's also a good idea to keep that in mind we still have we had the perfect weave effect a lot longer now that we got it so it's quite important you, that you get that perfect weave when you are playing the condi weaver the golem should die pretty fast after the condis ramp up Uh, not very complex you just have to remember the order of the elements other than that you just press pretty much again two and three and maybe four that's usually your best attack with any weaver I'm going to water now because I see that I have failed somewhere and my weave self was running out I wanted to go through all those elements to get the perfect weave so I get that 20% condition duration of longer as you can see the damage is about 30k so it is okay to play the Condi Sword Weaver it's not as strong as Power Staff Weaver but it's still an okay class compared to all the other DPS we get 29.3k according to golem um. uh, about moving as well also, just like we have with the Staff Weaver, the Condi Weaver also has some attacks that root itself on its place. For example, the Gale Strike, that one you can use when you move, but the Churning Earth, you can move during this or you cancel it. It's a very high bleed attack. That's a 30, 34k bleeding on it. Um, there is also the Earth and Vortex. This is also an evade, so you can use it tactically to evade, for example, some exploding things. Uh, for example, if there's blue some Bell Guardian, you could use this to evade it. It looks like this. 
but it rules you on your place so you shouldn't use it if you know that you need to move soon let's see it again so now use it and i i can cancel it but if you don't want to cancel things you will lose damage in the fire this will displace you the flame uprising it's a jump and also it makes a fire field down so it looks like this a lot of things here move you so you want to be a bit careful with them then another attack that roots you in place well not root you but moves you is well we have polar eclipse as easy but the right the lightning will move you this will move you so you can use some of them as cap closer just like the jump or the right lightning but some of them will just root you or displace you in some way so with some of these attacks you want to be careful this uh, rust frenzy also roots you. you if you move during it you will cancel it it's also easy to cancel it with your earthquake it looks like this and now if you move during it you lose your attacks so you want to know which one of your attacks root you and know when you shouldn't use it I think we could just go through all the attacks but because uh, it might be attacks that you don't know yet. The sword is still kind of new and not everyone has played Sword Weaver ever since the staff is just the meta. So let's just go to the start of the rotation and look into all the attacks. In air, our auto chain gives swiftness. It also is very nice um, power attack. Then we have Pyro Vortex and then the usual dagger things. The Polar Eclipse is a daze. It is one of the few CCs you get access to right away. So you don't have to attune to something else. So you get your element you wanted on the miner. So that's one of the few CCs you have insta access. It looks like this. It just jumps to your enemy and stuns them and if you hit them you get super speed it's very good for also gap closing an enemy if you are starting a fight or something because you will start with the air and fire the pyro vortex just puts a fiery vortex on the enemies it's a uh, it has a lot burning so you will use that a ring of fire very self-explanatory it places a ring of fire in the area that will burn the enemies then we will go to fire in the rotation then we will have the flame uprising like i showed earlier it's a jump so we can be a bit further away from the enemy and jump to them with this then we will have access to right the lightning since we had air major earlier it's also very good cup closer and it's fast it's very fast damage if you're far away it's not as like good for damage but it's still good cup closer so you can use like that get to the boss fast start hitting it more the auto chain in fire is pretty nice as well if i uh, got out of combat we would probably show it but it just gives burning on your third hit i think in the fire fire we have got a rising strike it's uh again it has burning when you stab your enemy and also deals extra damage against burning foes so we'll use that of cooldown in fire fire i like to wait for our flame uprising to come up again because it has a very strong burning field and our fields are extended by the trait the persisting flames so i like to wait for it and use it again after fire fire we go to earth in earth we have lava skin this is pretty much like primordial stance but now it just makes you red and that's pretty much it it only burns then we have the earthen vortex so this is the lava skin makes your character look like it's on fire and it will keep pulsing just like the primordial stance does they look very similar then we have the earthen vortex it burrows into ground and erupts the earth with shattering force so it is a bleed and also a vein you just use it like this it's also blast finisher so if you use your burning of fire first and then you use this you can get some extra might for your group the auto chain in earth is also good so pretty much the auto chains in fire and earth are good for your condi damage 
the one in air or water aren't that great. We will go to Earth Earth then. In Earth Earth, we will use the Rust Frenzy. It just looks like this. And you have to be very careful not to cancel your Rust Frenzy with Earthquake. Because you will use Earthquake after Rust Frenzy. I will show you what happens if you're being too eager and used too early. As you can see, I cancelled over half of my Rust Frenzy. And we lose about, let's say, four stacks of bleeding or even five. Which is not nice. After Earth, Earth we will go to Air. In Air we will use the Gale Strike. This Gale Strike is also a CC. It floats the enemies. I can show you the Golem because Golem doesn't get floated. But this is again one of the few CCs you have. The Earthquake is also a CC because it knocks enemies down. The Gale Strike looks like this. It put some, put some uh, tornadoes on the boss. After the air, after Gale Strike, we will start using our churning air. So we will go to fire while casting it. And in fire, you will again just do the uses. So you will use 2 and 3 and 4 and go to fire. Use 3, use 4, wait for 2. Again, use 2, go to earth. Use 3 and 2, go to earth more. Use 3. Wait for the 3 to cast, then use your Earthquake, then go to Air, use the Gale Strike, start casting Churning Earth, and go to Fire again. And that's basically the rotation. There is also the Weave Self rotation, which will be a bit different, but the usual rotation is pretty much just you go to Fire, Fire, Earth, Earth, Air, and then again Fire, Fire, Earth, Earth, Air. That's the whole thing. And you will use all of these attacks that I described of cooldown. So whenever you see them, that you can press it, just press it. And that's pretty much the Conde Weaver. As you can see, it's um, not that complex. It's almost like the Staff Weaver. But now your attacks don't have any ground targeting. And some of them will root you as well. And you will be melee the whole time. But that's about the base rotation. Then we can look into the weave self. The weave self, there is two ways to do it. You can do it the easy way if you know that you're lagging behind with your attunements. Or you can do it the proper way where you will get the most out of it. With the weave self, it has about, let's see how long, it has about 20 seconds to gather all the elements and that 20 seconds you will have your extra 20% condition damage and when you get the perfect weave, you get extra 10 seconds of that 20% um, condition duration or not duration, damage, but that's why you want to do the weave self so you get well, the perfect weave, so you get extra 10 seconds of that sweet condition damage. And that's the only time you will go to water attunement. Let's look what's in the water attunement. We will always go to water from earth, because that's the only uh, dual attack that has bleeding in it. As you can see, here it is. So it has bleeding and vulnerability and some damage. It's one of the few ranged attacks we have. It looks like this. It's quite like the Earth Earth, but this time we are shooting rocks at the enemy. Then we will also, from the water, we will go to fire. There we will have Twin Strike, which will give some chill, but it will also give burn. We will also use Frost Aura, because that one has no cast time and it's just free 10% reduced damage to you. So the Twin Strike looks like this. Slam slam. And Frost Aura, you can just cast it whenever you're doing anything, because it doesn't have a cast time. So, you might as well use it, because you lose nothing using it. So, with Weave Self, what I like to do, I like to start my Weave Self whenever I'm in going to air. Because air is some... Um, you, you don't go to air after you go to earth. 
for the last weave. So what the whole thing would look like is we always start with air fire. We will do the weave self. I won't use it now because I will do this slow motion. So we will do first the yuzu. So from air we go to fire. And then we go to fire. Then we go to earth. Then we will go to earth again. Then we will go to air. And now we will go to fire. This is because at this point the weave self is still not like it hasn't gone off so we still have some time if we do the perfect weave already by going to water from the first earth earth then we will lose some of the 20% condition damage uh, bonus so from fire we go to earth and now from the second earth we will go to water and that's when you get your perfect weave then you will go to fire and then you go to fire and the user rotation starts again. So fire, earth, earth, air, fire, fire, earth, earth, air, and so on. Whenever your perfect weave or not perfect, the weave self, whenever it's coming off cooldown, you want to use it in air, just like before, just like when you started. But when you are in the middle of your rotation, you will be in air from earth so it will look like this i generally like to use my gale strike then start channeling the churning earth maybe and then the weave self no churning the gale strike then weave self and then churning earth and then the fire but well, i'll just show what it looks like when you do it i guess makes more sense I'll get out of combat so I can use the Mushroom King, King's Blessing. So, this also has another effect I forgot to mention. It reduces your attunement cooldowns, so you will get to attune a lot faster. You cannot use all the attacks in each attunement. You just use what you could and then you move on to the next attunement because you have to be fast when you go through the elements for the perfect weave. So what it looks like is we're in air, we use the weave self, go to fire, go to fire, go to earth, go to earth, go to air, go to fire, go to earth, and then you go to water. And then you got your perfect weave done. And then of course you go to fire, fire, earth, earth, and air and so on but if you know you're gonna be late that you see the icon is here it's gonna be blinking when you know it's going off so let's do it a bit slower and you will see what i mean so we will start here we will use the weave self now we'll do it a bit slower so you will see that we're gonna miss it oh no we're gonna miss our extra 10 seconds of 20 percent condition damage so we use the weave self we go to fire we go to fire now we just fool around for a moment this is where you see your real self and you go to earth you go to earth now you know oh it might be blinking already like oh no i don't have time to go to fire and then earth and then there so we go to water already instead of doing the air fire earth water because that takes some time you can also panic use it in any other element to go to the water a bit faster so for example you were messing up with your rotation there was some enemy you had to dodge and you forgot to change your attunement so we will i will show you what happens if you attune to water from not earth it will have a lot well from fire the problem is if you attune from fire to water the problem will be that everything will be on cooldown so now I will be in fire and let's let's start with like air fire so it's more likely so for example now we're in air fire let's let's use our attack so like we use this then we use this and now we're going here for the perfect wave we use this stuff then we go to fire but now it's 
twin strike is on cooldown, you're losing damage because you only have this and just some autos. So you don't really want to go from fire to water, you want to go from water to fire. You can also, like I said, if you're in panic and you're in air and you want to already get to a perfect whip, then it's less bad to go from air. The combo here is not very good, it doesn't have any bleeding and burning, it only has chill and some damage, it looks like this. You just throw one icicle I guess at them, and then you can just go to fire and still have your twin strike up. So generally you would rather want to go from earth to water, if you know you won't be in time, than going from fire to water. So the simplified version of the weave self again would be like this. Let's start with the air. It would be weave self, go to fire, go to fire, go to earth, go to earth, and then we go to water and we have our perfect weave done, even though we were a bit slow or messed up. And the proper way again would be that instead of the first earth earth we would go to air to fire to earth to water which will give us a longer duration for the 20% extra damage so we start here we go to fire we go to fire we go to earth then we go to earth then we go to air, and fire, and earth, and then water. One thing you could mess up is that after the air, you went to fire fire. That's one of the mistakes you might make. And if you make that mistake, you will not really have time to go to earth and you will have to go from fire to water. Let's see what happens if we try to do fire fire in that phase so let's first go to the starting now we will try to go to fire fire after we went to air after the earth earth to see that you won't have time for your perfect way that way so we have so go to fire fire earth earth air fire fire you can go earth if you're really fast you can do it twice but the problem is your attacks will have cast time it's a lot to do here yeah it's easier to do here with the uh, no casting but let's see if i was fighting the golem Well, I can start here, it doesn't really matter. But we would have weave self, go to fire. Go use the fire attacks. You don't have much time. Whoops. <laughs> but uh, you don't have much time. They will usually be of cooldown before you get to your... Um, yeah. They will be usually of cooldown while you're casting your attacks. Because many of these will have cast time. So that was a bit butchered again. But let's see how it would be. So, weave self, go to fire, use some attacks, go to fire, use attacks again, go to earth, use some attacks as well, go to earth, go to air, use attacks, go to fire, go to fire, and it's blinking now, so again, it's, it's like very difficult to do it. If you do it twice in fire fire and earth earth you can do it but i wouldn't recommend it because there might be that you have to dodge you have to focus on mechanic or something and that way you might just delay it too much and it's safer to just do one fire one earth on the second round you will still get the pretty much the same duration you can also just keep track of your weave self and try to think oh I will have time to go to fire and then do earth and then do water if you feel like you have time 
then you can do it. But if you feel like, oh, I'm gonna run out of time, then go the water from Earth already. Okay, so... But I think that's about it, about the Condi Weaver. It's uh, not very complex. I think we should still explain where your CC is, because again, it's a Weaver, not much CC. So our basic CC skills are Polar Leap, it's uh, Daze. It's very small Daze, but it's still Daze. Then in the Earth, we will have Gale Strike. You have to attune with the air. So usually, if you're like, you're now in the Fire Fire, if you need Easter CC, you go to Air and then Earth. But if you know the CC can wait a bit like Summer Rogues uh, Brutalize, then you can go to your usual Earth. Then if you need it, you need a bit faster, you might not go to Earth, Earth but you already go to Air. Then you use your Polaric Cleap, so spam, and then you use the Gale Strike for some float. And then you will use Earthquake, and that's quite nice CC combo. Then you will go to fire and you will have updraft which is a launch so bam now you have used all your cc but if you're in a very rush you can go instantly to air and then you can use the polar clip instantly but if you do that for example from fire you only have the polar clip and after you do the next you will have the updraft but you won't have the one that you get from earth air so you will not have the gale strike which is your strongest cc skill i feel the weave self will also have the perfect weave will also have a very strong float you can use that if you really can time it in a way but usually you don't use that that attack looks like this i'm just going through the elements in a bit random fashion to get the perfect weave there we go the character also looks spooky when you have it, your eyes go red, but it looks like this. It has flat damage and a very strong float, but that's about it. It doesn't offer much to Condi, and I think you lose your perfect weave boons when you use the active. Uh, is there any questions? And as always, there is discussion about clicking. Clicking is slower and you should use keybinds if you're comfortable with it. But one thing I would recommend for all of you who use keybinds is that you would actually maybe click the attunements. Because you can switch your attunement while you're casting any spells. So if, for example, you were casting Churning Earth, you could click Fire Attunement. It might give you even faster actions but I don't think there are any questions so I guess I will just show the rotation one more time ask your questions during it if you have and after that if there aren't any we will end this episode You generally want to use your um, signet of fire when you're in water, water, because the water auto attack sucks. It's also bad to cancel your auto attacks which I'm doing quite a lot so if you can keep track of it let your auto attacks go all the way to that third strike because it is usually a lot stronger than the other two
Now we see Weave Self is coming up. We'll go to air, use it. be the surface anyway just get all those elements out of the way for that extra condition duration not duration damage <laughs> it's quite chill to play this build as well so if you have some for example, Mirage, you might want to move the gear just to test the Gondis Sword Weaver because it is quite fun to play and it does hold on its own at many bosses, even though it's not a meta build. We get about 29.6k damage, so it's not that bad. When you got the range, you just don't bring this class, <laughs> or you can, well, the range attacks you have is Signet of Fire, then you have the, if it's, for example, you're at Xero and you have to do buttons or something, you could go put your Ring of Fire on the thing you want to attack and then go back to button. The other attacks that have range are, well, the Water Air. This one has range. Signet of Fire has range. I think it's the Water Earth has range. But that's about it. You don't have really anything else with range. So if you know that it's a boss where you have to go range, just don't go there with this build. Um. Why am I testing at the golem? I'm testing this at the golem because getting to a real boss or real raid will take time. It will take another nine people. But if you want to see some damage logs from real fights with the condition weaver or just the condition weaver in general, I can provide you some. We have some on the guild wars 2 radar. I can do that already. If I can find it there. So you can see that it has an okay damage at actual rate. It's not really that bad. If I know how this thing works. Maru probably knows better how the logs work. I can show you the stuff we will be clicking if you want OZD. And I also have a log for that if you want the actual damage. And to spicy, I have shown the stuff we were earlier on the stream, but since we already finished that, we have moved on to the condition weaver. And the staff weaver, we are using the actual snow cross build with the snow cross rotation, snow cross trade, we are using the whole package. If you want to see that, you can just look at the snow cruise or you can watch the video of the stream later for the in-depth expl explanation of how the build works. to re-apply re our bones. Hi there. Use the console to begin combat testing. If you have any inquiries, come speak to me. It's the use those six, like before. Then we need the ranger ones. And we will 
will use the huge one to reduce some random numbers. I will refresh my food so it doesn't run out during the fight. That's a wrong cast. That's how you do it. You can play the Staff Weaver with clicking if you know how to queue spells, but it is not as effective as using key points. But if you are used to clicking and you don't want to change all your key points, if you like open world as well, then you can do it. And I can provide you the log with 40k DPS with clicking if you want more proof, but you can do it and that's about it. The damage was um, 37.4, but this wasn't a perfect rotation and the random number generate generation or whatever can fuck you up if not all of your meteor shower hits the boss. But again, I don't think there were many more questions, so I think that's about it for the how to play beaver. And the star beaver can be found in Snowcrows if you want to take a look at, a look at it from there. They also have written rotation there for it. And uh, thanks all for joining this, and I will see you all next week.